Good morning, everybody. Okay. Okay, I will try to hurry, but my case a bit long. <laughs> so uh, it's a multiple injury patient, and she was referred four days after injury. And now uh, two weeks, she was stable. And this is uh, her x-ray. Uh, when I see, okay, I, a little bit, oh my God. Uh, I show you the, the axial CT scan. So uh, simply, uh, the, the left side is uh, both column fracture. You have first with the sacral fracture in the back. And this is the anterior column. And the posterior column with some posterior wall. And the, left, uh, the right side is anterior dislocation of femoral head and neck fracture, and uh, some uh, comminution of the neck and intertrochanteric area. So you see that the neck is dislocated into the front. So uh, I think this is a very uh, complicated injury. I have problem with uh, finding a good classification for, for this case, especially for the femoral neck fracture. I don't know how to classify it. We, so, we, need, uh, we need two hours for this okay. case. <laughs> no, I go uh, fast. So uh, I think uh, I, I want to show uh, the, the unusual fracture pattern on the right is that the neck was very comminuted and you don't often see an anterior column with the anterior fracture. And this is some uh, impaction of the joint too. And, and both column is also not, not so common because it's more like anterior posterior hemitransverse with a posterior wall fracture also. So it's, it's not not very common injury. So I think uh, this is, is a left sacral fracture and a both column with posterior wall left stepping fracture. It's an anterior column, anterior wall fracture with a fracture dislocation of the femoral neck. So uh, at first I have to plan my, my thoughts uh, on treating this injury. For the left side, I think it's more simple and straightforward. It's your, your usual stepping case, so I think the surgical approach is, is okay. But I think the right side, because it's an uncommon fracture and you need to deal with the establum and the neck fracture also, so it's a lot of thought on the right side. So my plan for definite treatment was, I, I start from the back on the left side with the percutaneous SI screw, and I will uh, reconstruct the establum from uh, iloinguinal and stop by approach. And then on the right side, I will use uh, the Levine approach it's like a lateral window combined with the Smith-Peterson uh, for reduction of the fracture, and I use Watson Jones for the fixation of the neck. So this is the planned incision. You can uh, palpate the femoral head here. So I start, this is from the lateral window. I just want to show that uh, you can just start by fixing from the back to the front, and just buttress the anterior column and fix with some screws. Next, because it's a medial protrusion, we use the traction from the pin to reduce the protrusion and we use asymmetrical clamp after we fix the anterior column to reduce the posterior. So this is how, I often have a question how to apply this clamp. Usually you have to make a percutaneous incision to insert this tongue first, then you can bypass the soft tissue to insert the other clamp inside to, to, to squeeze it. And uh, this is the, the reduction. For the reason that I need the soft pie approach is I want to put this black screw because the fracture is very shearing type. It's very difficult to fix from top. So this is very good. So you can see that you, with one leg screw, the posterior column is reduced. And then you can use a long posterior column screw to fix. And this is the incision. This is lateral window. This is second window. And this is from the stop pie approach. Next, uh, I go to the, the right side to fix the neck. So start with the identification of the LFCN nerve. And uh, from the lateral approach and the, and the extension to the smith Peterson, you can actually see the anterior column and the anterior wall. I tag suture of the torn capsule, but I don't uh, detach it from the fragment of the anterior wall because you have alvascular necrosis. So this is very important because the wall is quite small. And then I fix with a buttress plate, like this. And then I, I fix the anterior column with some screws. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you that I push the femoral head back inside the joint. And then for the neck fracture, uh, actually Dr. Su Hong came to help me and we decided not to open the neck because it's so comminuted. 
So we use the close reduction with the K wires to manipulate the head, and then we fix with the diamond keep screw. So as you can see, that uh, it's quite unstable. So at one point, we have to fix the head with the astatum to just to to ream and, and insert the screws, and then we reduce it with the side plate. And the because it's very unstable, so uh, we used to uh, decide to use the trochanteric plate, and the reduction was, I think, okay. And I, uh, this is the, the clinical picture of the, 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 the wound. This is for the, the, the right side, the Levine approach, and this is the Elohim going on with the soft approach. This is the immediate post of film, and when I look, it's uh, even a bigger, oh my God, you know, because I have no energy to do anything left, but the hips sublux. And I, I don't know why, I think this is very bad then from the start because I think I do everything right. So my thought, oh, many oh my God. So my thought, it, why, why is what sublux? Uh, is it incarcerate bony fragment or soft tissue? Or maybe I, I re, mal reduce the, the femoral neck, then it, it go out of the, of the joint. Or just some stability from the, from the joint. So I, first I do the CT scan, and, and there was no incarcerate fragment. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know what to do next. So I think it's maybe because it's very unstable, you see there's no joint in the, uh, the, the incarcerate in the joint. So I just try, I don't want to do another operation, so I just try to abduct and maintain with the ACAS, but it's still sublux. So, uh, so then... Uh, because from my experience and in the literature, if you have a joint subluxation, it's early failure for sure. So I decided to go to do another operation. So I opened to, to clean all the soft tissue inside. It, even after that, the, the joint is still sublux. So my, my last thought, I start to repair the, the capsular rebel with the two anchor sutures, and then I, I can reduce the hip. So I, I was very afraid that it will come out again, so I maintained the ACAS for six weeks. And this is two weeks. Fall up is still good. Six weeks, I removed the ACAS and let the patient uh, ambulate with a four-point gate. And this is the three months uh, post-op. She start to limp a little bit. And at one year fall up, it's, uh, I think it's still good. But the joint is start to have some arthritic change, but I think it's is nothing you can do about that. And the clinical picture at one year is, uh, I think it's quite okay. She can, she can nang yong yong, but she cannot cut some art, I think. Yes. Squat. <laughs> Squatting. <laughs> Squat. Okay, so I think for this case, uh, the pre-op planning is very crucial. I think the, the, the hardest part is the selection of the, of the surgical approach. Because if you don't plan, you, you cannot do anything. Because everywhere, incision. Yeah? And then uh, neck fixation, I think if you cannot do anatomic, you, it's stable, it's good enough. And you have to make the joint congruent. This is very important. And do not overlook the soft tissue injury. Okay, this is my case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very